Hey, what's up guys? How you guys doing? My name is Avery, and today we're going to be making, we're going to be starting off a Tetris game for our series, Retro Remake. And if you guys are new here, you already know the deal, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't already, click that bell, and let's jump right into it. So the code today that we're going to be making is just going to be the first part of Tetris. It's going to be really simple. We're going to be drawing in the Tetris blocks, or whatever you want to call them, and we're going to be rotating them. And there's going to be a little bit of movement but in the next video we're going to be doing grid and we're going to do the rest of the game basically but we're just going to do this for today's video so how this is going to work we're going to have our blocks in a 2d array basically a matrix and let's say our block is like this here in the matrix and then we're going to want to put in zeros for which ones aren't going to be drawn and we can put in a one and a one and a zero and a one and a one and as you can see we would use this boolean to figure out that the block shape is going to look just like this for whenever we need to draw it so now what are you going to have to do to be able to rotate this block so it actually knows the correct way it needs to be rotated whenever you click up on your arrow it's going to rotate it clockwise so to do that, the first thing we're going to have to do is transpose. Transpose just means we're going to flip every single thing. So this is going to go here, this is going to go there, and vice versa. So once you've transposed it, let's say it's going to look just like this right here. It's going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And after you're transposing it, where you can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. If you want to rotate it counterclockwise, you're just going to reverse all the um, rows. But we're going to be rotating it clockwise, so we're going to reverse all the columns. So reverse the columns. We're just going to put 1, 1, 0. And 0, 1, 1. And now we just flip all the columns. And as you can see, with that shape, we're getting this right here. As you can see, if you were to rotate this one clockwise, that's what you get right here. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into the code. We're going to quickly make our window, do some of the basic stuff that we covered over in the other videos. And then we're going to actually make uh, a struct for our block right here. And we're going to make it so we can rotate it and move it around. So I just quickly threw this all up here. If you guys are unfamiliar with any of this stuff, just go ahead and check out the older tutorials. I'll explain it more in detail. But just to quickly explain, we're only using the SDL library. We're not using the font or anything else like that. We're having a window size 30 and 300, 300. We'll change it when we actually get to the game, but this is just for the example. We create our window and our render. And we set up some stuff for our frame count for the FPS and here in our render or in our render function we have the update input in render we're just drawing this background and we're also setting up the 60 frames per second limit so it's delaying it and then it's pushing it all to the screen and then right here we initialize SDL we create our window and render we initialize everything we make sure that there's no errors and we set the title to Tetris and then we're just looping through here in our game loop and we have update and input and render so if you guys aren't familiar with any of this if this doesn't make too much sense I'll just go ahead and check out the other videos and I'll have all this code as well in the description but just from here we're gonna want to set up some of these functions right here and we're also going to want to set up our transpose and rotate and all those functions for having a struct for drawing the shape so right here we just have a struct for a block which is going to have a color and if it's active we're not going to really use this active for right now but active just we're going to use it to say if it's just being drawn or whatever but basically it's just a single block it's a single cell which is going to be on the grid eventually and now we just need to create a shape and our shape is going to be this struct which is going to have a basically a matrix is going to have a 2d array of blocks like we showed earlier and the biggest size of all the shapes is just 4x4 four four. 
So that's just going to be the max size, but we're also going to have an integer for size so we can tell if it's going to be a little bit smaller. So in case it doesn't need to use all those booleans within the array, it doesn't need to. And then the X and the Y can be the location on the grid. And that's basically just what it is. It also has a color, so you can just force a color for all the blocks. And that's basically what it is. So now we're going to go ahead and actually create all of these blocks that are in Tetris. As you can see, these all these blocks, all of them have different names and their own colors. So we're going to go ahead and set these all up. So right here, we have this first block. So we can see here's our 4x4 four four array. And we set the color right here. And then in this 4x4 four four array, we're telling it which ones are going to be the block. And we're also giving it XY position and the size. It's 3 because it's never actually going to exceed this 3x3. Three three. It's never actually going to need these four. This fourth row and fourth column. So now we've added all these other ones. There's a Z block, shaped like a Z. It's only using three as well. There's the I block. It's a whole entire line. And it uses all four of them, because it can rotate through all four of these rows and columns. The J block. And it's basically what it is. I'll have all this stuff in the description, but these are all the blocks right here. And now that we have these blocks, we have these matrix of the rows and columns, what we're going to have to do is transpose them and then rotate them. Um, so to do that, like I said, we're going to be switching off all of them, move the reverses, and then we'll switch all the rows. So right now, let's go ahead and actually create a function for transposing. So this function for transpose, we're going to want it to return a shape. So it'll pass in one and it can return one. So we can just do shape S. And then we can just do shape temp equals s and now we're going to want to actually rotate through it instead of rotating four by four every single time we can just rotate through the size because we have a more specific size and we can just do i is greater than s dot size i plus plus and we'll do that one more time So if it's less than the size, it'll keep looping through it. And now we're going to actually want to rotate and flip over and well, transpose everything. So to do that, we'll just do temp dot matrix I J and we're just going to set it to S dot matrix J I. And it's basically just going to transpose it. It's flipping and switching every single spot. And we just return temp. And it's as simple as that. It just flips them all over and switches everything. And now from here, we need to create a function for reversing the columns. So we can just do shape reverse columns. And we'll pass in a shape as well. And here we'll do the same thing, create a temp, set that to S. And now we're going to want to loop through these. But this time when we're looping through the columns, we're just going to divide it by two because we're going to switch them as we go. So it's going to switch half of them at the same time it's switching the other half. So we don't need to do it twice. And to do that, we'll just do a boolean t. And set that as a temporary to just keep track of whatever was there. I'm going to just do temp matrix ij. And I'll set that to the opposite of where it's at. So to do that, we'll just pass in I. We can pass in S dot size minus J minus one. And it's basically just going to grab it from the opposite side. It gets the size of how much it is. So say it's here. So then you add size. So it's one. And then you add the sizes down here. And then you 
misplace it by one, so then it's just going to be on the opposite of it. And now, since we have this one saved, we can just do temp matrix i, and then we do the same thing right here to get the other side of it, and we set that to t because t used to be whatever this was, but that was switched over, so now we're just saving it right there. And at the end, we can just go ahead and return that. So return temp. And that's basically what it is. We can just have a rotate function. We'll just call it right here, void rotate. And we'll have this current, which I think I defined up there. I'll point it out in a second. Reverse columns, transpose. And current. So this current is just going to be the one that we're actually using at the scene, which is right here. It's just a shape. And we're actually going to have to go ahead and define current. To do that, let's jump down to our main function and do sran time null. So you're just doing a random function. You're putting in the seed right here, which is just the time. So every time you run it, it's going to be random. If you don't add this, line right here but you have this ran function it's always going to give you the exact same random number because it's always using the exact same seed um, basically always so now we're just giving it the random out of seven so it's just going to pick one of the blocks out of seven so now we've seen a function to be able to draw the shape and a function to in the input function just to be able to change press the buttons to, so it rotates it basically and do that, we're going to create a rectangle. We'll just do right here, we'll define the height and the width. We haven't actually set this one yet, but we'll set that to tile size. And then at the very top, let's define our tile size. Define tile size, and we can set that to 22. Now we're going to need a function to draw. So we'll do that right here. And we'll just create our tile right here. Correct. That's just going to be a template that we're going to be using for drawing everything. So we don't need to reinitialize it over and over. And we'll just do a void draw. And then you pass in the shape. Which is basically always going to be the current shape. So down here we can just set that already. Draw current. And now on here it's actually going to be pretty easy. We can just copy this right here. So we can loop through it. Now if matrix ij or s. So basically if it's turned on, then it's gonna draw it. And now we can just figure out the actual location. So we can do rect x equals s dot x times tile size. And this is just gonna make it so it fits onto the grid, which we're eventually gonna add in the next video. And we also, I mean, that's basically just it. We can draw it. So just do STL renderer. Then it'll be fill rect. We pass in the renderer. And we pass in this rectangle. And we also need to draw it with the correct color. So to do that, let's just, right here in our render function, we have this line right here for setting the color. We'll just change the color up here. And we'll just do s dot color dot r, s dot color dot g, s dot color dot b. So it's just pulling the color from the blocks and knows which one to draw it at. And let's actually draw it so we can have a frame around the block. So we'll just copy this right here, and we'll just set this one to a gray, I believe. I believe this might be a gray and not positive. And instead of fill, we'll just do draw. So that's actually going to make an outline. So we're going to fill it in, and then it's going to have an outline around it right here. And I'll show you what that's going to do exactly whenever we draw it. 
So now we're just going to set up our input and our update function. So we'll create a boolean at the very top for just showing if we're pressing left or right or up or down. And if you press for left or right, it's going to move everything left or right. It's going to shift everything over. If you press down, it's going to make it so it goes down faster. And if you click up, that's when it's going to rotate. So in our input function, we're actually going to do it a little bit differently than we have recently. Um, I'm just doing it differently just to show you a different way to do it. But it's not the best way. It's just a different way to do it. So like I showed you guys last time, there was a way to use a pull event and also use the key states. This time we're only using the pull event. Or you can just check if the type equals quit, so quit it. And then you can also use a switch. And you can check if the key was pressed up. You can also check if it was pressed down. So up just means it was released. Down means it's currently being pressed. And we'll just use a switch to check through every single one of them. We'll check for the left, the right, up and down. And also for the escape. And we're just going to switch the boolean on if one of these buttons are being pressed and then right here we'll just set them all to zero saying it's not being pressed in our update function we'll actually check for these things so if left we just do cur dot x minus minus so it's just going to shift it over one if it's right we'll shift it to the right one if it's down we'll Make it go down on the Y axis, and if you press up, we'll rotate it. And that's basically it. It's going to rotate everything, it's going to draw them all correctly. And actually, in here, we're going to want to add what position it is. So do that plus I. We did the same thing right here. Oh. It'll be s.y plus j and times the tile size. And then also right here in the reverse column, I had a typo. This is going to be minus one, not minus i. And as you can see, now it's going to randomly pick out one of the shapes, move it all around, and you can also rotate it. And that's basically it. In our next video, we'll cover some more things. We'll set up a grid. We'll make it so the block will move down on its own. You can speed it up and you can move it down. We're gonna set up collision and it's just gonna be able to be the actual Tetris game. It's gonna actually generate some of the blocks right here. So I'll show you the next couple blocks you're gonna be using. And that's basically it. Um, if you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely click that subscribe button hit that like button it really helps me make more videos just like this if you guys have any questions leave in the comment section below i'll have the code posted in on the github soon it'll be in the description so go ahead and check that out if you guys are new to the channel check it out i have a lot more tutorial videos just like this and thank you guys again so much for watching and see you guys next time